Hi, my name is Stephen Key and I'm currently studying Business and Management at Leeds Becker University and today I'm going to be talking about marketing, marketing orientation and the macro and micro external factors which may have an effect on Nike. So firstly, Nike. Hardly need any introducing, they are one of the most successful sports clothing accessory brands with a higher percentage of the market share than any of their competitors. They were founded in 1954 as Blue Ribbon Sports by Bill Bowman and Phil Knight and officially became Nike in 1971. In 2015 it was recorded that Nike earned revenues upwards of $30 billion. Now for those of you who don't know what marketing is, according to the Chartered Institute of Marketing it is the process of identifying something that people or businesses want and are prepared to pay for, developing a product to meet these needs before promoting it to your audience and finally working out details such as the price of the product so that the audience will pay whilst making the business as much money as possible. Some of the benefits of market orientation would be having a more focused production which will lead to a higher number of customers being satisfied with their product. I would argue that Nike is a market orientated company as the customer is the main focus of the business and Nike strives to innovate new products every year. For example, self-tying shoes which are going to be released next year. Innovations such as these are going to lead to a higher level of customer satisfaction which ultimately will provide a long term profitability for Nike as they are likely to get repeat purchases and improved brand loyalty. Nike have also been very effective and successful when it comes to marketing themselves, mainly through kit sponsorship. For example, you see all these big sports teams such as Football's Barcelona or Paris Saint-Germain, two of the biggest and most spectated teams in the world, or like tennis player Rafael Nadal or golf's Tiger Woods, all being sponsored by Nike. And as a result of this, people see that and want the Nike clothing or kits because they like to be like their idols. However, this does not always work out perfect for the business. For example, if the sports star gets caught up in a controversial matter, then it can look bad on the company. Like for example, the Tiger Woods infidelity scandal, creating a bad press around himself. Incidents such as this will have been damaging for Nike, who controversially actually decided to stand by Tiger and continue to sponsor him despite most of his other sponsors terminating their deals. However, they have also had a very successful TV marketing campaign such as their Winner Stays On TV advert, which was very popular and featured many of the world's footballing superstars. Winner Stays On. Winner Stays On, lads. Yeah, yeah. Winner Stays On. Yes, I'm Cristiano Ronaldo in. Yeah? Oh, I'm Neymar. There are many different external marketing factors which can have an effect on Nike, and these are split into two marketing environments, macro and micro. Some examples of macro environment factors are economic, political, socio-cultural and technological. For example, a market collapse would be an economic issue which could have an effect on Nike. However, Nike sell a well-respected medium product range and therefore this wouldn't make too much of a dramatic change for Nike compared to some other high-end brands as they would still be able to be affordable for some people. Nike have also been on the receiving end of a few issues arising as a result of the social macro environment factor as they receive a fair amount of criticism over their production processes since people are having serious ethical issues with their production technique. This is because they produce their products in other countries such as China and Thailand as the minimum wage in these countries is much lower. Public relations are a very important factor for businesses as if the company does not look favourable in the eye of the public then people are no longer going to shop their brand. On the other hand, some examples of micro-environmental factors are customers, competitors, suppliers, publics and intermediaries. One micro-environmental issue which may arise for Nike in the near future is rising customer expectations. In the short run, being innovative can lead to great success, but if the business gains a reputation for this, then it can lead to their customer base expecting more and maybe too much from Nike eventually leading to their customers being dissatisfied with the products that Nike release. Nike's closest competitor at this current time is Adidas, who have the second largest market share. Adidas, in terms of marketing, have gone down a very similar route to Nike, with a lot of sponsorship deals for well-spectated sporting sides and celebrity endorsement. For example, the brand has been appearing in popular gram artist Stormzy's music videos in songs such as Shut Up, Right. State your name, cuz. Stormzy, innit? Wearing his red Adidas jacket and in Know Me From. 
problem. Hashtag problem. Adidas crepes don't ask where I've got no arms. Don't ask what with brand promotion and recognition such as these, it is possible that Adidas could have a higher market share and reputation than Nike in the near future, calling Nike to lose out on many sales. I think overall it is clear that marketing is a huge contributor to the success of any business and that it is essential for companies to make sure that their marketing is perfect for their target audience, whilst at the same time not allowing themselves to be affected by external factors. Evidently, Nike have been very successful with their marketing as despite a couple of factors which are affecting them slightly, they have still managed to gain by far the highest market share in the sporting clothes and accessories market and are performing better than any of their competitors.